first off, we have what's called a unicellular gland, and that's a structure called a goblet cell. A unicellular, it's one cell thick. And so when you look around and trying to find these, really almost any place in the intestine, and you got to kind of scan, scan around and find maybe some classic examples of it, because when you look at things like these structures, those actually are goblet cells, but it's a funky cross-section because it made it look like it's right in the middle of this tissue. Well, it's not. This is how they're always located. It's just that sometimes in the profile, you don't see them right. So this, these over here are goblet cells. So when you look at them, remember we said it looks like, kind of like a wine goblet. Here would be the base or stem of the glass if you want, and here is the actual cup portion of that goblet. This is one cell. It is a mucus secreting cell that's going to secrete mucus out into the GI tract. And what you notice is, I'll talk about this when I do digestive system as I go along, there's not a lot of goblet cells located throughout this thing. You kind of scan around and look around, here's some other goblet cells, but there's not a lot. Whereas when we get further along, particularly if you were to pull up colon, large intestine, large intestine is almost all goblet cells and very few of these absorptive cells, lots and lots of goblet cells. So this is a unicellular gland called the goblet cell. There is no microvilli on its surface, even though it kind of looks like there is here. It should be an empty surface because this mucus gets secreted out into the lumen of the gland. This is its nucleus at the basal aspect of it. What identify this tissue? Hopefully you said simple columnar epithelium. Most of what I heard was... <laughs> So it's kind of like, you know, I don't really know what to say, but I'll act like I'm saying something. So it's simple columnar epithelium. One layer of cells, much taller than they are wide. Okay, so then we get into, and there's multiple places you can see goblet cells as you go along. So I'm not going to pull up multiple slides. That's pretty easy. You're hoping goblet cells is on a practical. It should be pretty straightforward. So then simple straight tubular glands. And on that page 15 at the top, it says slides 44 and 45. Use slide 45. Slide 44, it's almost impossible to really see good examples. But if you click on slide 45, and you come up here to kind of like this apex of this structure, and if you magnify that up, okay, let me go down and mag a little bit. Okay, so here's the outside of that structure. So every one of these things is a tube. And what I want you to think of the simple tubular glands being, yeah, there's one, there was one back here. Four times ago. Oh, you're still here. We've got one more back here. Okay, each one of these structures is, is a simple tubular gland, but they're just cutting cross section. So when I scan over here and get to this part, here's where I can actually see kind of like these tubes, all right? So if you think about this being a test tube-like structure, so if you look at this one right here, this thing right here is this like test tube structure, a simple tubular gland, okay? But I want you to make sure everybody understands that even when you see this, these things, basically just cutting through the base of them and seeing them kind of like in cross section. Here's one of the few places where you actually see a longitudinal section through the entire test tube showing you these simple straight tubular glands. Okay? Versus when we get into sweat glands, they will be a simple coiled tubular gland. Much different and much harder. You won't you will never see the profile all the way through the simple coiled tubular gland. So get ourselves oriented. Here's the outside, the lumen of the tissue or the, the organ. So what tissue would this be right here? Hopefully somebody said stratified and not simple. Stratified, what's the shape of the outermost layer of cells? Squamous. Are the nuclei there? Nope. So this is a stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. And then as you go through this other tissue down here, as you look, you'll see all these little circular pieces. Remember, I said the coiled tubular gland, when you make the cross section through, it's like taking that cut piece of spaghetti and kind of sticking it down the desk, and when you make the cross section through, you're only going to see little pieces of it. So each one of these things, remember, the duct goes all the way up to the luminal surface, and then down below will be where the glandular portion is. Now, you can always tell 
the glandular portion of this gland from the secretory portion of the gland because I always remember duck stains dark. It's going to be a darker pink stain because it's typically a bicuboidal epithelium, so it's going to be a darker. So these dark pink staining structures here, and then when I move even further down, I'll get into areas where, if I magnify this up, okay, I will be able to see, you can almost tell that that's and it's darker. This is going to be the ductal portion and these lighter staining portions. You can't tell much difference, but these are the lighter staining portions, which would be the secretory portion. All of these are parts of either the secretory or duct part of sweat gland. Simple coiled tubular gland. And let me put it to this way. If you don't like calling it a simple coiled tubular gland, and I'm one of those people I never call these things simple coiled tubular glands, call it a sweat gland because it's what it is. Dr. Opera is going to take umbrage with me when she gets back. But if I'm here doing it, I'll tell you, call it a sweat gland because it's what it is. Sweat gland. Okay? So what you'll notice is there's all kinds of different sweat glands here. And all the pieces, remember, it goes from here and it courses all the way through, all the way back up to the surface. You can't just see, but little pieces of the profile. So here are portions of the duct, and down below it's mainly the secretory portions of it. Okay? Some of the darker stains you can see here are some pieces of the duct. Here's duct. These are almost all secretory. That's duct. So these are simple coiled tubular glands or sweat gland. All right. So not to be confused with a simple branched alveolar gland, which again, you'll never hear me call it that. You'll hear me call the next thing a sebaceous gland. Sebaceous glands are fairly easy to find because what you're looking for is when you scan around, here's the surface of skin. And when you scan around, you'll see all these big structures that are these hair follicles. And within these hair follicles, you'll find things like this, or I thought I saw one on the other side. There you are up there. So pieces like these two things right here. These are sebaceous glands, and they will secrete out into where the hair follicles are. It goes out on the surface of your skin and keeps it nice and moist and keeps it from drying out really badly. So obviously it's very easy to tell a sebaceous gland relative to this, to this hair follicle. All right, but what, oh my gosh, what would you do if it was like this and there was no hair follicle in place? Oh, how would I know this was a sebaceous gland? Well, it's easy. All right. What I want you to notice about this gland is, look at each one of these. Each one of these things is a cell. And remember from lecture today, I said that sebaceous glands secrete by what's called a holocrine method of secretion. The entire cell dies off, and the cell plus its product, and this product in here is this little oily product called sebum. Each one of these little oily or lipid droplets is part of that sebum. So what happens is these cells die off and get secreted out. So if I ask you, where is the nucleus on the cells that you can see in here? Where would you tell me? Where's the nucleus on this cell? Right smack in the center of the cell. Okay? I'm going to show you something else in just a minute that won't have its nucleus in the middle. So sebaceous glands, you can see individual little oil or sebum products. I always tell people it's like a fried egg. Okay? Here's the big yolk in the middle. Got some little oily, greasy spots all over it or whatever. So here's, you know, basically I, you can tell I, I always equate things to food.